One thing that makes entrepreneurship easier is if you develop a personal brand around your business. Welcome to the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast, a weekly podcast providing career and creative inspiration to help you build a purpose-filled life. If you're interested in tapping into your creative potential, pursuing a career with passion, and building on your biggest and best resource, yourself, please join me on this path. I'm your host, Nancy Moore, and I want you to know that I'm on this journey with you. So let's get started. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank my sponsor, Dr. Jacqueline Duval, the OK Headache Doctor. Dr. Duval is a Mayo Clinic trained neurologist who is certified in headache medicine and runs Headache Specialists of Oklahoma here in Tulsa. If you suffer from headaches or migraines, you're not alone. Migraine affects 1 billion people worldwide. In fact, migraine is the number one cause of disability in women ages 15 to 55. So if you'd like to learn more about migraine or find out how you can effectively manage migraine with a specialist, schedule a visit with Dr. Duval's office. To learn more or schedule a visit, check out hsoo.org. Deidre Detterman is a powerhouse visionary and realized early in her career the impact of social media to gain market share. D2 Branding, which is a very clever name for her business, Deidre Detterman D2, specializes in highly targeted digital marketing using social media campaigns that drive customers to get results. Her Do It My Way approach, also the name of her podcast, has enabled her to create a business and a life that she is passionate about. During this conversation, she shares what led to her starting her own business, her outside of the box thinking, and the importance of creating your own network to maximize your opportunities. So I hope that you enjoy this conversation with Deidre Detterman. I am so happy to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. You can tell I'm excited. I'm wearing my OSU earrings. I I've got my it. pistol feet earrings on, yes. but, and you're wearing your orange jacket. We match today. So yes. Go, it's great. We're representing well. Yes, we are. We are. And it's funny. We were just, as we were talking, you know, as we were starting out, we didn't know each other at OSU. Right. And it's fun now that our paths have crossed, but you're doing some really exciting things in Tulsa. Well, thank you. You are too. Yeah, well, thank you. And so I want to talk about your professional journey leading up to D2 Branding because yes. you are the founder of D2 Branding. Right. And we'll get to what that is. Yes. But let's start out just kind of hearing a little about your professional journey. Yes. Okay. So I started in television. I worked for Clear Channel Television for 10 years, which was the local Fox affiliate here. So Fox 23 um, was owned by Clear Channel. So director of marketing, loved every minute of doing that. And I ended up being promoted to travel around the country and consult their TV stations. They owned 13 TV stations at the time. We had so much success here in Tulsa. We were one of the top Fox affiliates in the country back then. And so they asked me to consult. So it was like dream job, traveling the country, meeting new people, talking to people at stations. You know, this is right when television first started to kind of take a dive. People were going online for their news and entertainment and sports more. Yeah. So the industry was starting to feel like the pressure of we're losing viewership. What are we going to do? We have to change the model. And so I would go into stations and talk to them about, okay, we have to have an online product just like we have on air. You know, and, and it threw everybody for a loop because you've got these reporters going, I don't have time to do another story but you had to have additional content online because we were trying to keep people. Anyway, loved the job, was so fun. I had a two-year-old at home, and then I was pregnant with my son. So it was getting a little harder to travel. I was gone a week, home a week, gone a week, home a week. My husband's a pharmaceutical rep, so he traveled some. So my mom was stepping in. It really was a little chaotic on the home front. Um, but if I could pick a dream job, it was like my dream job. I was doing the thing. Um, well, I ended up having my son 12 weeks early, so just out of, you know, nowhere. Uh, I say that because I'm, I'm super healthy, I was eating all the things, I was doing, you know, exactly by the book what I should be doing, you know, pregnant, and 
for whatever reason, my body just was going into labor. So had him at 27 weeks and it, my world flipped upside down. There was no way that I could continue to travel and do this corporate job. And this was the, before the days of Zoom. So it wasn't, you know, a thing to work at home and, and you know, do part time from home and all that. And so I presented to the team. I said, hey, I can't travel like that but I still want to do the same job. I can have conference calls because we didn't have Zoom, right? I will do conference calls with, I've already met these people, I have already established rapport. I can visit one time a year to, to the stations, but I can't go as often as I, as I was. And um, I want to be part-time at home and part-time in the office and, and doing that. And they just looked at me and said, no, we can't do that. Um, you, you know, if I offer it to you, I'm going to, they have thousands of employees across the country. So, you know, it would set a precedent. And if we open that can of worms, then everyone has to do it. And I said, okay, so I became an entrepreneur, you know, I, it was the only way that I could work from home, control my destiny, make the money I want to make work the time that I wanted to work. You know, my son was in and out of the hospital. Um, and we went to doctor's offices for, you know, doctor's appointments every other day for the first three months of his life. Like it was not a normal, you know, maternity leave. Um, and so by the time my maternity leave was over in three months, I had a newborn because he was three months early. So he was just barely like, I think five and a half pounds. He was born at two pounds. And so I was like, I, there's no way. I've got to do something where I can stay home. He's going to need way more care than the normal, you know, maternity leave. So I was forced to become an entrepreneur. I ended up, you know, I took a book and carried it around with me for a week. And I was like, what do I love to do? Like, what conversations am I having? Do I love to have that I could just do? You know, I know marketing. I know advertising. That's what I've done for years. And it really came, it was centered around moms, right? Because I was in that mode. I love talking to other moms about their pregnancies. I love talking about having a newborn. I love talking about, you know, to other moms of preemies, what they're doing, how they're getting their baby to thrive. That just was my world. And so I ended up creating a mom website. So it was called 918moms.com. It was our local market. And I, I didn't know what I was doing. Let me just tell you that. I'm not techie at all. And so for me to like start a website and get it going um, was, it was kind of funny. Like my, I, I got voted most likely to call tech support at Fox 23. So the fact that I was doing something online was like insane. So launched the site. I, I knew marketing and I knew if I could get women 25 to 54, the biggest buying audience for advertisers in one spot, I could make money and I could sell from home. And so, you know, I had my partner, Melanie Henry, was the news director at the time, and we, she just had her daughter. So we were kind of yin and yang. I, I was the marketing salesperson. She was the content, you know, very smart, great writer. And I said, let's come together. You do all the content. I'll do all the sales and marketing. And we launched, you know, launched the site. We had 100,000 moms coming to the site every month through the power of Facebook. And that was right when we rode that wave of Facebook getting large, you know, getting moms. And you didn't have to pay. Mm -hmm. We were able to actually get people for no dollars, you know, for no ad spend. And it just took off and grew. And then we sold that site in one year to Griffin Communications that owns the News on 6 here in Tulsa and then News 9 in Oklahoma City. So it was just a great, great timing. I will tell you, if I launched that same site today, it would struggle. Um, I think it, it would not struggle. I think we could do it, but it wouldn't, you couldn't do it without any dollars. Mm -hmm. You, it, it would be really tough because they're paid platforms, you know, today. And so anyway, we ended up selling it, worked for them for two years as part of the contract. And I realized right then I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't want anyone telling me what to do, to be honest. And, you know, we had done, had autonomy for a year and, and had a lot of success. And I found myself in the corporate world going, why does it take so long to make decisions? And we've got to have a meeting about a meeting about a meeting to get anything accomplished. And guess what? Your competitors have just passed you by because it's taking forever. And it drove, it drove me nuts to do that. Now, and, and I'm not saying anything against Griffin because I can't even tell you what a great local company they are. They are the only local I agree. TV station. And David Griffin, I mean, I admire him so much. He has been innovative. They've stayed on top. They care about their people. People do not leave there because it's just a great, beautiful environment. So n nothing to say about that, but I knew I needed to work for myself. And so 
I just, I left there and kind of would meet people for coffee. You know, I'd have a lot of people reach out. Gosh, I have an idea. Can you help me start my business? Can you help me, you know, what, what do I do with this idea? How do I grow it and sell it in a year and, and those type of things. And so I started consulting and I thought, you know what, maybe I can get paid to do this. You know, I'm going to take my skills and knowledge and expertise in marketing and I'm going to package it with what my grind of, of creating this business from scratch to, you know, a hundred thousand moms and I'm going to help people do that. And then I started to find that's my most satisfaction. Like I love to work with people that just have an idea, give them the motivation, give them the tools they need to succeed. And the funny thing is they have it inside them already. They just don't know it. It's just, you just need like a little roadmap. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'm not launching their site. They're doing it, but it's just kind of like, let's link arms and I'm going to just show you the right path. Like, Hey, do it this way to save time and money rather than, you know, the hard way. Um, so that's where D2 branding came about. I was like, I'm going to start consulting. And the funny thing is it's a digital marketing agency because that's what I knew, right? I know marketing. I've done sales for years. I saw the world go from traditional to what a digital company can do, right? Digital marketing versus radio, television, print. And I'm like, I can't go back. The future is digital. And so we were one of the first digital agencies here. You know, now everyone is a digital agency because you would not be uh, open. Your doors wouldn't be open if you didn't say you did digital today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everyone has have to has to morph into that. So we're a full service agency. And, you know, now I spend my time really, my, my passion is coaching clients. So we have a business coaching arm of the, the agency. And I think that's really what makes us different is there's a lot of marketing companies out there. What they do is they, they get you the impressions, they get you the leads, they they kind of done their job and hand it over to you. You're expected to go make money and, and figure that, the business side out. Well, what happens a lot of times people are like, what do I do with these leads? I don't know what to do now. So I realized really quickly, I've got to help them convert them to buyers to make money. Or they think that marketing hasn't worked. So we created this whole business consulting really the, the center of what we do is consulting, but we can get you, you know, your brand ready and, and, um, the, the, all the digital marketing that you need and, and your website and your videos and all that stuff that goes with it. But at the end of the day, you got to show return your investment or none of it has worked. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, so that's what we, you know, that's what we do. And then I have a podcast, do it my way podcast. That really kind of stemmed from people saying, hey, can you go to lunch? Hey, can you do coffee? Hey, I have an idea, which I love. I want to help every single person, but I found myself, I can't do that all day, every day. And, and there's a lot of people that can't con afford the consulting side, right? They just want to get started. They just need a kickstart. So that's where the podcast came for me was just like, I can direct people when they say, what do I do? And I'm like, you know what? I have a podcast all about marketing without money. You need to listen to that. I'm going to send you a link and go do what I say. And then when you start making money and you're ready for, you know, bigger things to spend money on marketing, call me and we'll help. And so it just kind of became, you know, a passion of, of, of mine just to help the masses versus having, being able to go to coffee all the time and going mm -hmm. to lunch and all that. Mm -hmm. So that was a really long, yeah, no, I love it. <laughs> I love that you thought about, you t took a step back, mm -hmm. took a beat and thought, what am I good at? What do I enjoy doing before you embarked on what you're doing now? Right. And it's interesting that you were so ahead of the curve talking to people, uh, you know, your, your bosses at the time saying, you know, coming up with the plan of how you could be home, how you could take a conference call and, you know, do all of that to be able to be there for your child who was a preemie, you know, and your daughter and all of that. And they didn't take you up on that because yeah. now, yeah. you know, that that's a thing. Right. But then it wasn't. And so, right. but boy, you were really thinking about how it could work and it could have worked had they said yes. And yeah. it's interesting because those people could have retained this amazing person, <laughs> but you know, again, wasn't meant to be. Wasn't meant to be. And yeah. I think God had a different plan for sure. Yeah. And you know, even even having my son, you know, twelve weeks early, I think everything happens, you know, for a reason. It's the path you're supposed to go on. And 
I was such a driver. I mean, my personality is an achiever. I'm a driver. I yeah. want to excel and be the best, and I'm going to do everything I can to get there. And, and, and sometimes at the sacrifice of my family, and, and I hate that, right? I, I don't even like that side of it. But you, you go, go, go. And I had an amazing village around me, so it's not like I, my kids were neglected. Or, you know, my husband has always been there. My mom lives down the street. She's always been there because I have that achiever personality. But God said, hey, there's something more important out there. Mm -hmm. And that's when, when that came down. You know, the way that played out, I realized my path is to step back. Now, I still was achieving. I still, but I did it on my time. You know, kids were in bed, and I would stay up till midnight working and doing it when I could do it or get up at five in the morning. But the time in the middle of the day where my kids needed me, I was there. And I don't think I ever would have stopped if something dramatic hadn't happened in my life. Because mm. I just don't have that personality. Mm -hmm. It had to stop me in my tracks to say, you, you got to change course. That's not going to work for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And I've been able to go to track meets and dance recitals when they were little and soccer tournaments and all the things because I worked for myself. And I could take off when I needed to and had that balance. Okay, so that's a good part about being an entrepreneur. There's many good parts, but right. what has been something that has been hard about entrepreneurship? Oh, gosh, I think a lot is hard about entrepreneurship. Okay. I think that it sounds great and rosy and perfect. You know, you're going to make the money you want to make. You're going to work the hours you want to work. Yes, that is all true, but you're going to have to grind to get there. And I think that the grind part is where people either make it or break it, right? I mean, they say like 3% of the people that start businesses actually succeed, right? Make over 100000 or more and are able to sustain because that grind. I mean, I, in the beginning of 918 Moms, we were not making money and it was constantly, and I had a newborn dealing with and a two-year-old and I'm working until, I mean, I work till midnight every night, almost for a year. Like, I would put the kids to bed at, like, 8 o'clock, and my poor husband, I was like, hi, I'm over here, and I would just get in the office and grind because I, I had to get things done. You know, I didn't have a team. We weren't paying people out yet, and, you know, you know how that is. That's, that's the hardest thing. If you have money to start a business, life is easy. You're hiring an assistant. You're hiring your accountant. You're hiring all these people to help you. If you're doing it all and grinding, first of all, I love that. I have respect for that because... You're going to be such a better leader because you've done every position in the, in the business. That's going to help you along the way. But that is a very, it, it's a grind. Mm -hmm. It is a grind. And most people would give up at the end of the day because you could go get an eight to five and get paid. And that's a lot easier, right? And, and, and they would, they'll throw in the towel. It's not for everybody. Entrepreneurship yeah. is definitely not for everybody. So speaking of entrepreneurship, you had an accolade from Entrepreneurial Magazine mm -hmm. that is uh, Best Entrepreneurial Companies in America, a designation mm -hmm. of Best Entrepreneurial Companies in America, which I thought was pretty amazing. So how did you earn that well, it, it was a, a great honor yeah. for us to be a part of. We They actually reached out to us. They were looking for some women-owned businesses. And that had you had to have had the, you know, the success financially, but not only that, also kind of well-rounded team. You're offering more services than just one. There was this, all these categories that went into it. So when they contacted us, I was like, hey, let's, let's apply for this. Let's see if we can get this. Accolade, never thinking they would call us, right? I'm thinking this is nationwide, it's Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur Magazine. And we ended up getting to the preliminary and then we did an interview. They had like a Zoom interview and did the interview and, and ended up, you know, being awarded it, which was really a great honor. That's so cool. I know, I thought I've got to mention that because that is something that I think would be a feather in your cap yes, for sure. It was it was really exciting. Yeah. It was fun to be, you know, seen nationally yeah. you know, ranked, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay, so one of the things that you are known for is personal branding. And so you actually coach high-level CEOs and entrepreneurs on how to create a personal brand so they can live a life of financial freedom, working when they want to work, and making the money they want to make. Right. 
And that sounds like a dream. It, well, it, it, it is. I will say, we talked about entrepreneurship mm-hmm. being so hard. Mm-hmm. One thing that makes it easier is if you develop a personal brand around your business. Mm-hmm. And why is that? And to be honest, I did this without even realizing I was doing this when, I, when we had 918moms.com. I was the mom. Melanie and I were the moms. We were the target that people wanted to come into their store and buy. They were looking for that women 2554, that mom. And so we were living the life. Well, how did we market and get 100,000 moms on there? We hosted a radio show on Mix 96. It was called the Mix Mom Squad. Okay, I had never hosted a radio show or done a podcast in my life. But I was like, you know what? We need to be on radio, television, print to get the word out. And we're going to use social media, this thing that's up and coming. So let's host a radio show. We go to Mix 96 and pitch them. And I said, hey, I'm going to do a show about moms. I know you want moms. This is the mom station right? We will have mom topics. We'll have guests. We will, you know, have call-ins. We'll do all these things. We'll come up with all the work. You don't have to pay us $1. You can sell the advertising. They're looking at us like we're crazy, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get an hour of airtime every single week where I'm pushing 918moms.com, 918moms.com. So what happened was that was part of how we built this massive group of moms coming because it was a free site so they weren't threatened I wasn't trying to sell anything which I actually was selling advertising on the back end and and the funny thing about that is we ended up competing with them in the, in the long run they didn't see us as a threat because we were a free site we were moms we had great content the show was really popular well as we started taking some of their advertisers and selling not not intentionally we didn't go after their list or anything but people started calling us like, wow, we want to be associated with you. We want to be on your website. They saw dollars leaving. Once that started happening, it 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 became a little competitive, right? Mm-hmm. But that's how, you know, for us to get the word out, that was really the goal is like, how do we get as many people as possible to be on there and, you know, be able to blow up, blow up the site. So it's, Gosh, it's you... but personal branding, let me go back to that. Personal okay. branding is us being the moms, us showing up as the expert. I wasn't an expert mom, right? I was a mom like everybody else. I just dealt with some things. We were just out there talking about it and being real about it and sharing stories of our life. Okay, so we were branding ourselves as expert moms. TV stations started calling, can you come on and talk about what you're doing? And so, you know, we actually were writers for uh, Tulsa People Magazine and had a partnership with them and were able to go. And all of this was just, they didn't have to pay us, but we were able to get the word out. So it was our ad budget is the way we saw it. So we branded ourselves that way. So I saw the power of how that worked and then translating it into to D2 branding. Why do people want to do business with D2 branding? You know, not now as much as in the beginning. My story. I had built a website for moms in the area. I had sold it within a year. I had created this massive social media following to where people were like, I want that. Okay, and so D2 started being around my brand. They wanted to talk to me, they wanted to, right? And so the podcast, that's where the podcast comes in. That's where I'm actually writing a book right now. The book is getting ready to come out. It, I'm, I'm meeting with the editor, the final edit is on Wednesday. You're gonna have to come and back, be, I didn't even know that. <laughs> so the book's coming out pretty soon, but it, and it, it really, the book is all about creating a personal brand. It is what, why you should create a personal brand around your business. Because you th- if you think about it for just a minute, it has nothing to do with, people don't care about the logo on the door, right? They care about you. Who's the person behind it? So think about an insurance agent, for in- example. Insurance I use because I really, and it's funny because both my parents worked in insurance. I had one at State Farm and one was an Allstate agent. So I know insurance, you know, through and through. But it, you don't really care who the company is, right? Is it State Farm, Allstate? Is it Farmers? Is it Geico? They're, they all offer the same things. Mm-hmm. It's it's the person you're dealing with. That's why you care. You deal with Bob because he lives down the street and you know him from church. And his kids go to school with your kids. And he seems like a really nice guy. And he shows up on social media every once in a while and says something about insurance. I feel like he's an expert and he's a great guy. So I'm going to do business with Bob. That's personal branding. Right? And, and the beautiful thing, anyone can launch a personal brand. It's you being you. You take your skills, knowledge, and your expertise, you package it, and you sell it to the world. It could be through a podcast. It could be through being the best TCC teacher out there. It could be 
there's a million things you could do. You know, you're a hairdresser. You have a personal brand around being a hairdresser. You're the expert. You're going to show up and give me tips on what to do in the summer so my hair doesn't get all dried out, what to do at the beach or what, right? That's a personal brand. So it's really any industry. It works. And, and personal brands are memorable, way more memorable than the name of a company. You're doing it right now without realizing you're probably doing a personal brand. It's you. Okay. Yeah. You are a personal brand. Yeah. You are an expert. You're, you're, you know, passion and purpose. You have a podcast. You're doing events. You're the one that people are looking to. And the more you grow and the more you do that, you're the expert at that. Okay. Gosh. Okay. That's awesome. Um, so I do talk to my students at TCC about developing their own personal brand because I don't think it's ever too early no. to start thinking about that. So I was going to get your take on that it, when, when students are in college, because I have them create a LinkedIn account, yes. um, you know, and just be thinking about what they're posting on social media. Yes. And it seems like that would go without saying, but it, it needs to be said. What you're posting, what you're putting out there, people are seeing. Yeah. future employers, future yeah. partnerships, you know, whatever, they're seeing that. So I thought I'd love to get your take on, from a college student perspective, what they should be thinking about. Definitely your personal brand it starts there, right? And every time I hire anyone, whether it's an intern that's not getting paid, they're just getting credit hours to a high level person, I am going to their social media first and I'm seeing what they have on there. I want to see what type of person they are. Right. And, and I, that's fine if they love to do, you know, ride horses, if they, you know, it doesn't have to all deal with business, but you get to know their personality a little bit. But what is the perception you want to put out there for people, whether it's a future employer or let's say they want to date someone. Right. What perception are you putting out there? Is it positive? Is it, you know, the things you're passionate about, the things you care about, your character? You know, or is it Debbie Downer and you're negative all the time and, and you hate the world and you're talking politics and you're arguing and you're doing all those things? That's not shedding the best light for a job or a relationship, to be honest. You know, and so definitely starting a LinkedIn is a great place to start. And then, you know, whatever is important to you. So if you look at my social media, my family's obviously important to me. I've got a son that just like graduated. That. So I have a lot of stuff about my family on there because... That's a huge part of my life. But then I'll trinkle in stuff about business and I'll do, I'll post an interview that I did on a podcast that I think, you know, on my personal, I think that my followers would be interested in this interview. You know, there's some female CEOs and entrepreneurs or just women in general that want to start a business that, that might learn from this. That's all part of personal branding. So it's, it's, it's the things that, you know, the perception of what you want people to think about you, right? And what you really are passionate about. So that can that easily can start in college. Maybe you and you volunteer for something and that's a big part of what you do and you want to maybe start a nonprofit one day. Start putting stuff out there about that. About volunteering, about caring and helping people and encouraging other people to do that. That sets you up as someone that's going to be an expert in nonprofit world someday. Mm -hmm. You know, and it can be anything and everything. It it could be OSU football. It doesn't even have to just be you know, a do good, it could be a feel good like that. You know, talk about passion. I mean, OSU fans are passionate. That's something you want to go into sports marketing one day and you're at OSU and you want to go and, and put all those things out there and like you are that expert, right? You're giving your opinion on this and that and giving advice. That's, that's a great way to start. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That is good advice. Okay. So this is, for me personally, I'm just so curious. What is one thing you do to set yourself up for success? But one thing you do every day mm -hmm. to set yourself up for success. Is I, there something? Yes. I have worked out at 5 in the morning for 25 years straight. I'm talking five days a week, five or six. Never miss a beat. Like, it is just my thing that sets me up for success. It gets me ready for the day. By the time my team gets to work, we have like an 845 huddle. That's what I was actually doing earlier when I was, before I came in here. We jump on and we all just, because people are remote and, and do a quick huddle. I've already gotten up, worked out, you know, had my personal development time where I'm reading. I read my devotional. I read industry stuff. You know, if there's a podcast I'm getting ready to do, I'm reading up on the guest. It's my quiet time. 
Um, then I'm, you know, getting my, when my son was in school, now he just graduated, but I'm getting him up, getting, you know, breakfast ready. I'm cooking my healthy meals for the day. I meal prep. And by the time I get in the office at 730, like, I feel like I've already done a world's worth of, of activity to where I've got tons of, you know, energy when I get there. I'm not tired. I'm not lagging. You know, I, I just really think health is just a really big part of my life. And I think everything you put in your body and everything that you do physically is all for longevity and it affects your daily work life a hundred percent the people I hire I look for things like that because if you're if you have that much excellence in the way you treat your body that's how you're going to treat your work right you have that that service of excellence about you and I think it just correlates into the job so that's something I've done years and the reason I started doing five in the morning I'm not I didn't I wasn't in college going oh I can't wait to wake up at five in the morning I had kids and I was a busy working mom and my kids had activities after school I wasn't going to pick them up from daycare and go work out and put them in another daycare right but health was important to me and so you're you're not sacrificing anyone else's time but your own at five in the morning I'm not bothering my husband I'm not bothering my kids I'm not taking away from any family time I get up I get it done I come home and the result is, you know, I'm, I feel healthy. Mm-hmm. I am a great example for my kids to look and go. And my kids are both the same way. My daughter does the exact same thing. In college, she works out every day. My son is very active. You know, they see the healthy food choices that we make. And we're hopefully, you know, in giving those habits to them that they'll take through their life. But it has made me successful. And that sounds crazy when, when I say that. But it is definitely spilled over into my work life because of that discipline. It starts in the morning and then continues throughout the day. That's so smart. Okay. I yeah, we have similar morning routines. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And it it does help a lot. Don't you just feel great? Yes. I mean, the yeah. days I don't work out, yeah. you know, I'll have a, a shoulder that's bothering me or something, you know, the older you get. And I still try to do the high intense workout, which I need to probably step it on back. But I just love that, you know, crazy boot camp style workout. And I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to give my shoulder a rest and won't do anything. I, I will be groggy. I'm cranky. My husband will go, you didn't work out today, did you? Because I, my mood has totally changed. It gets your endorphins going for the day. And I also have ADHD, non-diagnosed, but... If I if that was a thing when we were growing up, I would have been like the poster child for it, and it helps me to release energy to where when I can when I do get to my desk I can focus because otherwise I'm my mind is going a thousand places. I need to get that out and have an intense hard workout so when I finally do sit down I'm like oh I can breathe okay mm-hmm. I've already done it for the day mm-hmm. and as a, an achiever personality I can check it off the box I'm like I feel one step ahead. <laughs> Right? I got it done. I got it done. You feel great. You know, and the older you get, I want to be able to, I mean, we go skiing every year with our kids and we, you know, I want to be the grandma that can like do stuff. You know, I don't want to be like, I can't run around with my kids in the backyard or my grandkids because I'm aching. Right. Everywhere. Yeah. What about sleep? Just out of curiosity. I'm a sleep Nazi. When do you go to, when do you go to sleep? Nine. Me too. Yeah. Okay, and, and my poor friends are like, my college friends will have like a weekend and they're like, I'll stay up maybe till 10 or 11. Like, but that's my max. I'm like, girls, I can't. I mean, when you get up so regimented, I go to bed at nine, get up at 430. Like, it's just this ingrained in me. Mm-hmm. There's no way, you know, it's really hard um, to stay up late, but they laugh. They're like, you know, oh, we got to start at five o'clock because Deidre will be going to bed here pretty soon. I'm like, you're right. I've just always been really, even with my kids, too, strict about bedtime. You know, the phones are up. I don't have my phone next to me. I'm like, I shut it down, go to sleep. Now, my husband, he'll lay in bed, and he watches the news, and he kind of, if it's, you know, Thunder's playing the other night, he's watching that. So I don't mind the TV on, but I'm not watching it. I'm, I'm trying, I'm winding down and trying to go to bed. My preference would be no TV in the room. No TV, no phone. Just go and but marriage crash. and compromise. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You got to You got to do that. Yeah, but. that's so funny. Okay, so um, okay, let me see what else. I'm gonna have to have you back because I didn't realize about the book, and I have all these oh, other yeah. questions. Yeah. So um, I might.
might just ask about OSU, and then I have a final question. But okay. um, I'm really, I really admire you for all that you give back to OSU, and um, you are on, is it the board of director? Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, board of directors? Yeah, so it's the um, Alumni Association Board. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, if you just tell us a little bit about that experience and, you know, what you've enjoyed from yes. that. Well, there's nothing more satisfying than, you know, giving back to the place that you had the best time of your life. And I think, you know, the relationships I made in Stillwater are lifelong relationships. Number one, I met my husband there. Number two, I, you know, my sorority sisters I've got, there's 10 of us that get together every year and just have a really close friendship and bond that has lasted. And it was because of our time at OSU. And I think it's just the atmosphere there is incredible. And it's funny, I was not super academic. I didn't make a fabulous grade point. I think I ended with a three point, which isn't terrible, but definitely not an achiever. I'm not getting any awards for that or getting into grad school for anything like that. But I learned networking. I mean, it was like I mastered networking. You know, you've got all these people, like in my classes that, that I had, I was actually a journalism PR major, but all the people that I met and the people that I met, even in, you know, different sororities or fraternities or different things on campus, all, they all kind of have this common bond. I, I feel like OSU is just this common bond. When you see somebody in orange or, you know, you're like, go folks, yay! You know, they're always super friendly and it's just that, that cowboy way. And I have, I probably have had 25 clients from people I knew in college over the years that have called me and said, you know, currently I, I bet I have 10 that are really loyal clients I've had for a long time. But it's people I didn't even necessarily hang out with every day, but they were like, oh, I see you own a marketing company. You went to OSU. I remember you up there, you know, hanging out with you or I knew you in this class or that class. And I, I own a company now. I would love for you to market my company. It's things like that. And you don't think of that when you're in college because you're like, these are the people that are going to be successful CEOs. These are the people that are going to own their own businesses, right? These are your prospects. You know, maybe not right out of college because they, they aren't there yet, but down the road. And so from referrals to networking, that has been such a huge part so of, of our, my business. And there's not a better place that I want to give my time and give back. Because it just is, you know, it's just the feel. As soon as I pull into Stillwater, I just light up. I'm in a great mood, you know, going to back to game day. It's just so fun to see all these people, you know, that you knew and meet new friends. And I think you can go anywhere and sit down and make friends there, right? Mm-hmm. You, you have that common bond. Mm-hmm. So the, the Alumni Association has really um, allowed me to do that. I've met some amazing people. The board, are they're all crazy smart you know, they own businesses, they're, they're leading America's greatest companies. And so it's just a great, you know, group to be around. And if I can give a little bit back and, you know, I get to talk to the students a lot of, a lot of times to the marketing students, which is, is my favorite part of my day. So that's so cool. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. Thank you for answering that. Okay. So in wrapping up my theme this year is grow more in 2024. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering what you're doing this year to either grow personally or professionally. Yes. Great question. Um, well, I always, I have that achiever thing going on in me. And so I'm always like trying to evolve and do more and do more. So the podcast was, was my kind of branch out last year go out and do a podcast, you know, put yourself out there. It's funny because I coach people on this and I've coached people for years, but I'm not usually the front runner, right? I'm coaching speakers. I'm coaching podcasters. I'm coaching, you know, on-air talent. I did that in TV for, for years. So to put yourself out there, it's different to be the talent. So that is definitely where I'm growing. Um, you know, the podcast went from audio. I did 100 episodes of audio, and then I thought I need to do on-camera video. Like, I, we're a video company. Why are we not doing video podcasts? This is what we coach on. And so I started doing video interviews, and it, it took me completely out of my comfort zone. I'm still getting better. I have a, um, I actually took a producer from one of the TV stations. I hired her, and she's on my team now because I know she knows production, and she's really good with talent, and I'm like, I want you to critique me after everyone. Like, I want you to write everything that I said wrong or what I need to do. And she, in the beginning, she was like, well, this is a little, like, I feel bad. And I'm like, don't feel bad. This is what I hired you for. Constructive criticism. 
gold. That, yes. That's how you get better. Yes. And, and even me, she looks at me, you know, here I am, could be her mom, and I've been doing this for 30 years, but I want feedback. I have not been on camera for 30 years, right? And this is how you get better. And so she does. She does a little list of everything, and it gets shorter each time. I don't have as many long things as I did, but she critiques me. And that, you know, to make, make myself better. So that is one. Um, I'm writing a book that's coming out. We talked about that. It's completely out of my comfort zone as well. Never done that. And so going through that process, um, I've helped a lot of people write books. And so I need to do it myself to be able to say, you know what, that was hard. I, I pushed you and said, hey, get this done in the next 30 days. And it's not going to happen in 30 days. It's hard, right? And so that's something just professionally, I'd say the podcast and the book are the two things that I'm really you know, kind of pushing myself professionally. And then personally, you know, I think just sticking with health and, and, you know, I try crazy things all the time. So I'm on a pretty strict like macro diet right now where I'm eating, you know, the exact number of protein and carbs and fats and healthy fats and all that that you need. And so I'm, I'm being really diligent about sticking to that. That would be a personal, um, and then I think just growing spiritually, you know, um, surrendering, you know, it's not my plan, it's God's plan, and how do I wake up and say, God, guide my steps, rather than Deidre, guide my steps, because I'm usually in charge. I'm an in-charge person, so that, that's probably my biggest weakness, and that's the, the, the biggest area that I would like to see growth, you know, over the years, just saying, you know what, God has a plan, I'm just the one walking the steps, so guide my steps. Mm -hmm. That was my prayer this morning. Was it? Yes. That's so yes. great. So, That's great. yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so yes. much for visiting with me. I have enjoyed it tremendously. And that was a surprise about the book. So I am yes. going to have you back next yeah. season. And we'll Perfect. talk about that because that's really amazing. So yes. anyway, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. It's, it's a joy talking to you. I love talking to a fellow poke, you know, wearing orange across the table, which is so great. So. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap on this week's episode. I want to thank you for listening to the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast. It means the world to me, and I'd love to connect with you. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Sharing Passion and Purpose and Twitter at Passion Sharing. Also, if you like this podcast, it would mean a lot to me for you to subscribe, rate, and review it. And as always, all my show notes will be available on my website, sharingpassionandpurpose.com.